Goodness of God. 
The sun comes up, it's a new day dawning It's time to sing your song again Whatever may pass and whatever lies before me Let me be singing when the evening comes Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, O oh my soul, worship His holy name. Sing like never before, O oh my soul, I'll worship Your holy name. Eternal God is thy refuge, and underneath are the everlasting arms. For I know that my Redeemer liveth, and that he shall stand at the latter day upon the earth, whom I shall see for myself, and mine eyes shall behold, and not another. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in times of trouble. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run into it and are safe. The Lord has been our dwelling place throughout all generations. Before the mountains were brought forth, or ever have those forms the earth and the world even from everlasting to everlasting thou art god thou will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee because he trusteth in thee trust ye in the lord forever 
Fear thou not, for I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee, yea, I will help thee. I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. We want to welcome you this evening to this Thanksgiving service for our brother John Eliezer Pollard. Could we bow our heads? Father, we thank you for this day, God. We thank you, God, for having kept us, having brought us to this place from beginning to end, from everlasting to everlasting. You are God. And Father, even as we join together family, friends, and acquaintances to remember our brother John, Father, we pray that this evening's service will truly be one of thanksgiving and praise, a service of joy, because you, God, have been faithful. And so as we begin this session this evening, God, receive all the honor, receive all the glory, receive all the praise, in Jesus' mighty name, amen. You may take your seats as we begin with our congregational songs. The very first song is through all the changing scenes of time. I did ask you to sit, but we perhaps do a better job singing when we're standing. So my apologies, we will ask you to stand and sing throughout all the changing scenes of time.
Amen. Our next song is going to be How Great Thou Art. We want to tell God this evening how great He has been to us, how great He is to us today, and how great He will always be. Oh Lord my God, when I in awesome wonder. Oh Lord my God, when I in awesome wonder. Yeah. 
Hallelujah. You may now take your seats. Jesus. We have our first scripture reading. It's going to be Psalm 100, and it's going to be read by K. Carter. The first one we're reading is taken from Psalm 100, a psalm of praise. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know he that to the Lord, he is God. It is he that hath made us, and not to be ourselves. We are his people, and the sheep of his pastor. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving, and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him, and bless his name. For the Lord is good, and his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endureth to all generations. Here ends the reading. We're going to take that injunction to make a joyful noise unto the Lord very seriously as we stand and we sing our next congregational song, The Goodness of God. Running after me, your goodness is running after me. Your goodness is running after me. 
of the goodness of God. Hallelujah. You may take your seats as we move into our second scripture reading. Part of how God expresses his goodness is via protection. And we are going to have Sister Glendine Mears come and read Psalm 91. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. I'll read Psalm 91. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress. My God, in Him will I trust. Surely He shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler and from the noisome pestilence. He shall cover thee with His feathers, and under His wings shall thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and butler. Thou shalt not be afraid for the terror by night, nor for the arrow that flayeth by day, nor for the pestilence that walketh in darkness, nor for the destruction that wasteth at noonday. A thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. Only with thine eyes shall thou behold and see the reward of the wicked, because thou hast made the Lord, which is my refuge, even the most high, thy, thy habitation. There shall no evil befall thee, <laughs> neither shall any plague come near nigh thy dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. They shall bear thee up in their hands, lest thou dash thy foot against a stone. Thou shalt tread upon the lion and adder, the young lion and the dragon shalt thou trample on the feet. Because he hath set his love upon me, therefore will I deliver him. I will set him on high, because he hath known my name. He shall call upon me, and I will answer him. I will be with him in trouble. I will deliver him and honor him. With long life will I satisfy him and show him my salvation. Here end of the reading. Amen. Amen. That's a psalm that speaks of the protection that God offers. We're going to have the eulogy, and that's going to be done by Faith Skeet, and immediately after, there will be a solo, and that's going to be brought to us by Rachel Skeet. Good evening to everyone. Good evening. Thank you for being here to celebrate my father's life. Hi, I'm Faye Skeet, John's only daughter. John Eliezer Pollard, my dad, was a husband, a father, grandfather, great grandfather, brother, uncle, cousin, friend of many, neighbor, entrepreneur, and mentor. He was born on the 23rd of September, 1937, to Mr. and Mrs. Clement Pollard. When he and his twin sister were born, she being the larger of the two, unfortunately was born, stillborn. But dad was a tiny baby. His parents were told by the physician that he would not live beyond 12 years old. My dad lived to be 86, a few years beyond 12. <laughs> you didn't get my joke? Oh, okay. <laughs> okay. Dad grew up a slim, five foot nine, quiet but had a hearty laugh, sweet smile, kind eyes, and curly hair which my brother. <laughs> anyway, we won't talk about that. My parents met in the UK and got married there in 1968. Even though Drexel is not far from Brighton, yet they did not talk to each other here in BIM. But that marriage lasted 55 years. Excuse 
excuse me, I make all this noise. The following year, I was born, and yeah, I'm telling my age. The following year, I was born, six years later, my younger brother, Jonathan, was born. My elder brother, Patrick, was from a previous relationship. Dad loved his precious wife and always called her by her home name, Hazel. <laughs> and she, in turn, dearly loved her precious husband, John. He loved his children, siblings, and relatives, and he loved right, and they loved him right back. He was a helpful person and would readily help those he could. Dad was hardworking and did his best at whatever he put his hands to do. He was even a bit of a cricketer back in Oldham during his younger years. Mum said of their relationship, we did not have everything, but what we had, we learned to share. When Dad decided to return to Barbados, he returned with his youngest son, Jonathan, in 1980. Then Mum and I came in 1982, which would have been my second visit um, during the time because I had visited in, in 1974. Now you know. <laughs> Dad tried his hand at farming and raising a calf. I could have told you lots about that. Anyhow. Rabbits, goats in St. George, where we had lived previously. When we moved to St. John, he grew vegetables, cut canes, and then continued to do the trade he learned in the UK, upholstery. He was good with his hands, and I believe that's where Jonathan and I got that from. He restored furniture like it came from the store. Sweets, car seats, coach seats, ottomans, etc. all beautifully made are restored. Dad fell ill and was taken to the hospital and stayed overnight. He was sent home to be, he was sent home to spend his final days comfortably. That is the second time. First time was when he was born. Second time was during his illness. But by God's grace and mercy, he was with us for three more years. Sometimes during his illness, Dad accepted Jesus as his Savior and Lord. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. My prayers and those of others were answered. God honored our prayers of salvation for Dad. Prayers go on till. Prayers go on till. On still. Praise go on still for many who are here and abroad for their salvation. My family, I thank, give God thanks for his keeping power. God had no, God, Dad had no pain during his illness, not even when his, his leg was, when he lost his leg. To God be the glory, great things he has done. Coming to the end of his days, he was comfortable and cheerful. Thank God. Mm -hmm. Then on the 6th of July, 2024, he went to be with the Lord, his Savior. January. Jesus said in his word that he will never leave us nor forsake us, and he has truly been faithful. God was with that even when we could not be. Farewell, Papa. Rest. Farewell, Papa. Rest in peace till we meet again. Some sweet day. To my brother Jonathan, better known as JP, I'm so glad Mom did not listen to me and take you back to the hospital to exchange you for a baby sister. <laughs> but then again, I was only six years old. Only God could see your worth then and down the road to this time. You were great, you have grown to be a great, fine young man that your parents and I are proud of. My brother has been there for my parents and put their needs even in front of his. Mm -hmm. 
God has seen, and you will be rewarded. Thank you, bro. Blessings. At this time, on behalf of my family, I'd also like to thank Dr. Holder for the, from the clinic in Rosegate, the caregivers who gave, who came to my parents' home. Dr. St. John and the staff on Ward A1, QEH. The quarantine staff and the staff on Ward A7 at the Geriatric Hospital in Beckles Road. Pastor Bennett, Mosley, and Pastor Watson. The intercessors at Messiah House of Prayer and Lodge Road Wesleyan Holiness Church. During the dad's illness, or after his passing, to those family members, friends, well-wishers, visitors, those who came and called living here and abroad. Thank you for your prayers, hugs, warm sentiments. For those who don't yet know the Lord, he is still inviting you to come to him Amen. while there is yet time. He will not leave you, he will not forsake you, even to the end. Accept him today, friends. He loves you and has a home prepared for you. Thank you. Amen. Excellent. Amen. 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 The song that I will be ministering is called It Is Well With My Soul.
here this evening can make that declaration that it is well with my soul. We want you to stand as we prepare for the word and we're going to welcome Reverend Dr. Paul Watson who will bring us the word of God this evening. You may be seated, praise the Lord. Did you notice how she gained confidence and took that last verse? Yes. Come on, give her another hand. Amen. <laughs> beautifully, just beautifully done. Amen. I want to just read Philippians 1, 20 to 24 in the New International Version. My personal condolences to the entire family. I went to Messiah Street so many years ago. Um, even before I started a pastor and lived in Messiah Street St. John so many years um, I can't even put a number Amen. my memory bank isn't here with me but I know Mr. Pollard for all of those years all of those years so it's my privilege to share in this service this evening. Thanks to the family and thanks to Pastor Bennett and the members of Messiah's house for giving me this privilege. And then my heart felt strangely warmed when I heard that he had given his life to Jesus. Amen. 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 I know the time when he would drop his wife, amen, to church, but now to know that he's in the kingdom. That makes preaching so easy. So just for a few minutes, Philippians 1, 20 to 24, I eagerly expect and hope that I will in no way be ashamed, but will have sufficient courage so that now, as always, Christ will be exalted in my body, whether by life or by death. For to me to live is Christ, and to die is gain. If I am to go on living in the body, this will mean fruitful labor for me. Yet what shall I choose? I do not know. I am torn between the two. I desire to depart and be with Christ, which is better by far. King James says, which is far better. <laughs> but it is more necessary for you that I remain in the body. The Apostle Paul is in prison. It doesn't look like that, but he's in prison. And he's writing to the church at Philippi. He's most likely chained to a Roman guard 24-7. Most likely. He's on trial for his life, and he's going to be brought before a Caesar, one of the Caesars, and with no certainty that he'll ever be set free. But as you read the book of Philippians, you're taken back that this is one of the most joyous. In this book, he says, rejoice. And again, I say, rejoice. This is the most uplifting of his epistles. Very uplifting. And coming from a person who is in jail and facing death. His attitude appears to be like he had just won the Olympics. He is a winner. Mm -hmm. He sees himself not as a loser, but, a but as a winner mm -hmm. in this entire book. He radiates this attitude of winning. Most winners have a definite purpose for their lives. And Paul was no different. Most winners have a compelling reason to get out of bed every morning. Hmm? And face the day as a challenge. And if we're going to keep on using the athletics and train. And, training, yes. 
And that driving purpose keeps them on the track. And that's uh, a play in the word track. Mm -hmm. And makes them automatically successful. They train and they train. And Paul demonstrated this quality in his life. His purpose was clear. For me to live, to live is Christ. That was his purpose. For me to live is Christ. I want to give you a little fill in the blank this afternoon. You didn't come for that, huh? You didn't walk with the exercise book. <laughs> but that's okay. You don't need an exercise book. Fill in the blank. For me to live is what? Christ. Blank. Put a blank there. For me to live is? Christ. Shh. Don't tell anybody. Because for some people, they will fill in the blank what? Sports, a cold beer, Internet. <laughs> Social media. Huh? pleasure, fun. People will fill in that blank differently. For me to live is... But Paul knew the answer to that question. For him to live was Christ. Christ. Full stop. Because he knew his life's task. Paul knew what he was placed on earth to do. Yes. And you and I need to know why we are here. Yes. Why have I been placed on this earth? What is my task? What am I here to do? What am I supposed to be doing? A lot of people wander through their lives and never find out why am I here. Each of us this afternoon need to answer that question. Why am I here? What is my task? Paul was told in Acts chapter 9 and verse 15 very early when he was converted the Lord told Ananias go for this man is a chosen instrument to proclaim my name to the Gentiles. His job was to proclaim Jesus Christ. That was his job. I, I, he used to go before kings and before the Gentiles, and before the people of Israel. His, his task was already laid out for him. And I will show him how much he must suffer for my name. And that's why he could say, coming down to the end, before he got into the prison, in Acts chapter 26, verses 19 to 22, when he's put on trial before King Agrippa, he could say, so then King Agrippa, I was not disobedient to the heavenly vision. First to those in Damascus, then to those in Jerusalem, and in all Judea, and then to the Gentiles. I preached that they should repent and turn to God. He had fulfilled his task. He knew what his mission was. Philippians 1.20 that I read, my life is to bring honor to Christ. Christ will be magnified in my body. Christ will be exalted in my body. Our number one job is also laid out for us. Mm, didn't you know that? Yes. Your task. Even before the, the psalmist says, even before the members of our body was formed in our mother's womb, God has put a calling upon our lives and God has put in us our task. Ecclesiastes 12, 13 lays it out for us. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep his commandments. For this is the whole duty of man. You couldn't get it laid out any better than that. So all about said, this is it. Fear God and everything else will fall in place. The job that you do, your career, your talents, everything will fall in place. Fear God and keep his commandments. For this is the entire, the whole duty of man. And that's why Paul could say later, in 1 Corinthians 10, 31. Therefore, whether we eat or drink, whatever you do, whatever you do, do all, do all to, the to the glory of God. 
What you're doing right now, is it bringing glory to God? What you're doing right now, is it magnifying his name? What you're doing right now, are you ashamed of what you're doing? Paul says, I'm not going to be ashamed. But secondly, I notice, not only did Paul know his task, but when we look at the summary of his life, we see how he fulfilled his task. And you know, every one of our lives will have a summary. We heard the eulogy this afternoon. A summary of John Pollard's life. Hmm? When he was born. When he died. When he passed away. And that dash between our sunrise and sunset is the summary of our lives. How much Will the pages be filled with what we have done in our lives? Our lives will be summarized in about 10 minutes to 15 minutes in a eulogy. What will be said of us when it's your turn to uh, be read over and preached over? What will be said of you? I remember in 1888 the story of Mr. Noble, Alfred Noble, who had invented dynamite. He had a, 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 a big shock because his brother Ludwig had died in France from a heart attack. And because of a reporter who didn't know who had died, he thought, the reporter thought that it was Alfred who had died. <laughs> and he proceeded to write a scathing obituary that branded Alfred as a merchant of debt because he'd invented dynamite and that he was profiting he had grown rich by developing new ways to mutilate and kill people and Alfred did not like his obituary he was alive to read what people thought of him <laughs> it brought him to a crisis in his life he, beca he became so obsessed with what people would say of him that he rewrote his will, immediately rewrote his will, bequeathing most of his fortune gained through the invention of dynamite to establishing the Nobel Prize. The Nobel Alfred Nobel, he established the Nobel Prize the that Prize. gave grants uh -huh. to individuals who had invented yes. and who had made a difference in the world. I wonder if you had the opportunity to hear your own obituary, what people thought of you. I wonder how you'd react to how people think of you. If you had a chance tomorrow morning and you opened a newspaper and you saw, oh, I'm dead. <laughs> I wonder, would you change your life? Mr. Noble did. You have a, a Nobel Prize to literature. A Nobel Prize for science, a Nobel Prize for uh, different, uh, even for, for writing, a Nobel, Nobel Prize for peace, hmm? peace yeah. one we're more familiar with, a Nobel Prize for peace. Yeah. With the prize comes money. Money. money, thousands of dollars, as a result of Alfred Nobel. Nobel. But the Apostle Paul could say in 1 Corinthians 11, he said, are they servants in Christ? I am out of my mind to talk like this. I am more. I have worked much harder, been in prison more frequently, been flogged more severely. I've been exposed to death again and again. Five times I received from the Jews the 40 lashes minus one, 39. Three times I was beaten with rods. Once I was pelted with stones and left almost dead. Three times I was shipwrecked. I spent a night and a day in the open sea. I've been constantly on the move. I've been in danger from rivers, in danger from bandits, in danger from my fellow Jews, in danger from Gentiles, in danger in the city, in danger in the country, in danger at sea, in danger, the danger from false believers. I've labored and toiled and often gone without sleep. I have known hunger and thirst and have often gone without food. I've been cold and naked. Besides everything else, I face daily the pressure of my concern for all the churches. He lived a full life. You ever been beaten yet? I don't mean by your parents. Rods. 
couple times 39 lashes minus 40 lashes minus one which is 39 but Paul could say as he looked back over his entire life in 2 Timothy 4 7 and 8 I have fought a good fight I have what finished the race I have kept the faith now there is in store for me the crown of righteousness which the Lord the righteous judge will give me so Paul lastly could measure his life as he summarizes his life, he could say, I've lived a profitable life. Amen. He said, to die is gain. Is gain. Think about that. To die is gain. And we can go through that, and we can spend a lot of time, gain is that profitable, is that word like dividend. It was speak, is, is speaking of interest, like if money had gained some interest and accumulated if I die, I will cash in all my investments. What a way to look at life and death. If I die, I will cash in all my investments. That's what Paul was saying. I'll receive both the principal and the interest. I will have more of Christ. Amen. The reality of having eternal life. Hmm? Gain, gain. Crown of life, gain. Amen. We can go on listening. Heaven, gain. Seeing Jesus face to face, gain, profitable. I'm telling you this afternoon, your life needs to be profitable. Amen. Don't waste your life. Don't waste your days. Don't waste your years. Ensure that your life is profitable. And when you come to die, you can declare, gain, gain, gain. gain. Amen. I'm closing. A young man came to Prime Minister Gladstone, that's going way back in English history. And uh, he said, Mr. Gladstone, I, uh, Prime Minister, I would, I'm glad for a few minutes which I can lay before you my plans for the future. The young man, I would like to study law. The, the, the Prime Minister says, yes, that sounds good. And what then? Then, sir, I would like to gain entrance to the bar of England and become a lawyer. Yes, young man, that sounds good. What then? Then, sir, I hope to have a place in Parliament. Yes, young man, that sounds good. What then? Then I hope to do great things for Great Britain. Yes, young man, and what then? Then, sir, I hope to retire and take life easy. Yes, young man, what then? Well, then, Mr. Glass, when I suppose I will die. Yes, young man, and what then? You can accomplish a lot. You may gain what you may think is profit, but in the long run, you have lost. I wonder about your life today. We need to learn to, to really believe like Paul yes. that to die is gain. And the pastor says, it's much, much better to die a believer yes. than to die an atheist My or an unbeliever. Shall we stand? better by far. I want to pray specifically for the family and I want to pray first of all for those who have listened to this word. I want to pray for you. Father, in the name of Jesus, we come before you today and we ask, Lord, you will bless every hearer that they would not just be listeners of the word but they would be doers. They would ask themselves some serious questions from the question, what am I living for? Fill in the blank. They would ask themselves, is my life gain? Am I making a profit as I, I live my life or am I just a loss? And when I come to the end of my days, where the ledger just says, loss. No gain. No dividends. Nothing to show. We pray in the name of Jesus, you will have every one of us today will examine our lives yes. and line up our lives your to your word. That yes. to die is, is a profit. If you know because our brother is right now profiting yes. from accepting Jesus, for he is with the Lord. The Lord. Hallelujah. I want to pray specifically for the family. 
Father, we thank you now for this family, every family member. We thank you for Sister Hazel today and the children. We thank you for them, Lord, and we ask that you would bless them even in the midst of their grief and sorrow, that they can rejoice in knowing that you come to the place of accepting you as Lord and Savior. So we do have a hope. And that hope is that we will see Brother John again. Amen. We pray even now that those who feel the hurt and the loss, you will take them up in your arms. Yes. Minister to their needs. Yes. In Jesus' name. Yes. And when the hours get lonely, and when the times of missing John comes in, Holy Lord, Spirit. you will bring to them the memory of the good times. Yes. The wonderful times they've had together. As family. Yes. Bless Sister Hazel, bless Jonathan, and bless, and bless Faye. Faye today, and the grandkids, yes. and the great grands. In Jesus' name, yes. amen. 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 And amen. Thank you. Thank you. Jesus. I just want to say to the family on behalf of the senior pastor of Messiah's House all the leaders, the entire congregation. We want to express our condolences to you. Um, understand that we are continuing to pray for you and that we know that God will lift you up underneath you all are his everlasting, compassionate arms. So Father, we thank you for this time in your presence. We thank you for this opportunity, God, to share with this congregation the word, the question, what then? Father, we thank you for Brother John as he lived his life and made a difference in this world, God. And even now, we are comforted in the knowledge that he is with you. And so as we leave this hall, God, and go to the burial place, Father, we pray that you will indeed be with us. You will indeed strengthen those who need to be strengthened, God, that you will lift up our heads. You indeed are the lifter up of our heads. And God, grant that all of us understand that we need not mourn like them who have no hope. And so we give you praise and thanks this evening. In Jesus' mighty name, amen. God bless you. May the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit rest and remain with us all now and forevermore. Amen. God bless you. Our recessional song, To God Be the Glory.
to everyone. We gathered here to commit to the ground the body of our dearly departed John Pollard. The Bible reminds us in Ecclesiastes chapter 3 that to everything there is a season. A time to be born, a time to be born, a time to die, a time to plant, a time to pluck up that which is planted, a time to kill and a time to heal, a time to break down and a time to build up, a time to weep and a time to laugh, a time to mourn and a time to dance, a time to cast away stone and a time to gather stones, a time to embrace and a time to refrain from embracement. The embracing, a time to gain and a time to lose, a time to keep and a time to throw away, a time to tear and a time to soar, a time to keep silent and a time to speak, a time to love and a time to hate, a time of war and a time of peace. We trust that these coming days, as the memories of your loved one, John, flood your mind. I trust you will find comfort in the fact that he has made a decision to know the Lord Jesus Christ as if Lord and Savior. And therefore, we, don't, we who know him as Lord and Savior don't mourn as others who don't have a hope because in Christ there is a hope. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Of whom shall I be afraid? Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. Earth to earth, ashes to ashes, dust to dust. Shall not the judge of all the earth do right? Shall we bow our heads in prayer? Father, we ask, even as we commit this body to the ground, that you will comfort the hearts of his loved ones, his wife, Hazel, his son and daughter, Jonathan and Faye, the grandchildren, the great-grands, Father, the many lives who have been touched by this man that you have given to us. We pray, God, that the memories will comfort us. And, Father, that we will rejoice in you, knowing that he has made a decision for you. And, Lord God, those who put their trust in you will never be disappointed. Bless and console all of us who mourn today. In Jesus' name. Amen. Our first number will be, I'll meet you in the morning. By the bright river side, when all sorrow has drifted away, I'll be standing at the portals when the gates open wide. At the close of life's long dreary day, I'll meet you in the morning with a high. Sit down by the river, and with rapture, oh, the presence renewed. You'll know me in the morning by the smiles that I wear when I meet.
Sing the wondrous love of Jesus. Sing his mercy and his grace. In the mansion bright and blessed, he'll prepare for us a place. When we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be. When we all see Jesus, we will sing and shout the victory. Sing the wondrous love of Jesus, sing his mercy and his grace. In the mansions bright and blessed, he'll prepare for us a place. When we all get to heaven, what a day of rejoicing that will be. When we all Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Heir of salvation, purchase of God, born of his spirit, wash in his blood. This is my story. This is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story. This is my song. Praising my Savior all the day long.
When peace like a river attendeth my way, when sorrows like sea billows roll, whatever my lot thou have taught me to say, it is well, it is well with my soul. When the trumpet of the Lord shall song, and time shall be no more, and the morning break eternal bright and fair, when the save of earth shall gather all on the other shore, and the roll is called up yonder, I'll be there.
and see that the Lord is good. He'll give you everything. He'll give you Shall we pray? Father, we ask you that you will, you will comfort each family member and friend. May they be comforted by your word, encouraged through happy memories, and sustained by the hope of the resurrection for all who place their faith in you. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his faith to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up the light of this countenance upon you and give you peace, both now and forever. Amen. Amen. God bless you. Show. Sure.